Welcome to the RS Expert Advice Podcast. In each episode, we interview a trusted expert in the electronics industry to provide purchasers, engineers, installers, and maintainers with valuable insights into the product and technology solutions that can help them overcome common challenges and add real value to their workflows. We hope you enjoy this episode and that you learn something useful and new. Today, I'm speaking with Logan Morrow, a Relay's product specialist at Phoenix Contact, a leading global supplier of innovative industrial electrification, networking, and automation solutions. Welcome, Logan. Thank you for joining us today. Hi, Christine. Thanks for having me. Please introduce yourself and tell us about your role at Phoenix Contact and how you ended up working with Relay's. So I am the product marketing specialist for Relay's here at Phoenix Contact. Whenever I first started at Phoenix Contact, I got the opportunity to go through our technical sales apprenticeship program, which is basically a year long program where they teach you all about the company, all the different facets of the company and all the different products that we offer. How I ended up in this role, I I knew I wanted to pursue the product marketing route. And when I got a, a chance to meet the interface team that handled relays, I I felt like I meshed really well with some of the the people on that team and I was interested in the product line of, of relays, which they had a, a vacancy for. So I applied and was fortunate enough to get the role. Please also provide us with a brief introduction to Phoenix Contact. So Phoenix Contact is now an industrial electronics, industrial automation company that originated in Germany back in 1923. At first they were just manufacturing terminal blocks, but over the decades have expanded their portfolio and the size of their company to now this is, it's not just in Germany, now it's an international company that has multiple subsidiaries all over the world. And we also don't just sell terminal blocks now, we sell things that go into the cabinet, out in the field and everything in between. We mainly focus on industrial automation and one of our main mission statements is moving towards an all electric society or just the electrification of society and moving towards a more sustainable future. Tell us about relays. A relay is basically an electronically controlled switch. So you could compare this to a light switch where when you flip a light switch up and down, what you're actually doing is opening and closing a circuit, right? So when a circuit is closed, the the loop is complete and the light's on. When the circuit's open, the loop is not complete and the light's off. A relay opens and closes circuits just like this except instead of your finger controlling when the circuit is closed or open, it is controlled by an electronic signal that comes into the input side of the relay. For the typical relay, which is an electromechanical relay, this electronic signal on the input would energize the coil within the relay. That coil, once energized, would induce a magnetic field, and that magnetic field is what would open or close the the circuits on the output side of the relay. I know there are different types of relays. Can you tell us about interface relays? So interface relays are typically between a a low low power signal and a device that needs a high power signal to turn on. And so what I mean by this is you might have a PLC that is able to produce a signal of half an amp. And you want that PLC to turn on a solenoid that needs three amps to turn on. Well, what you could do is if you have if you have an interface relay between it allows you to take that low signal from the plc that's enough to energize the coil of the relay pass that signal on to the output side of the relay and now we're you and turn on a solenoid and now we're using a low a low power signal to control a device that requires a high power signal to operate what's the difference between electromechanical and solid state interface relays an electromechanical relay is, that's sort of the, the typical relay that you would imagine. That's what I described earlier when I was talking about the light switch and the coil and the moving parts inside of it. That's an electromechanical relay where a solid state relay actually has no moving parts in it whatsoever. So one of the great benefits of that is solid state relays have a much longer lifespan than typical electromechanical relays because there are no wearable parts inside of it. Now, what they accomplish is very similar to electromechanical relays. They're still turning things on and off, but the mechanism they do to get there is a little bit different. So while electromechanical relays have that mechanical moving part, the solid state relay 
the input and output side are basically connected by a light signal instead of the input and output side being connected by a magnetic field like an electromechanical relay. So since the input and output side are connected by a light signal, you'll often hear solid state relays be called optocouplers because the input and output are optically coupled. So one thing to consider with this light-based switching is that we can switch a lot faster than we could with electromechanical relays. Because to switch really quickly with an electromechanical relay, we would physically need that arm to move up and down over and over and over again. That's going to create friction, which is going to create heat. It's going to wear out and it's going to break pretty quickly. So for high frequency, high frequency switching applications, solid state relays are awesome. What types of applications are interface relays used in? Are they more essential to some systems than others? So that's a good question. And ultimately it's it's really almost all applications. I would I think it would be quite a challenge to find an industrial cabinet somewhere that doesn't have a single relay in it. Relays are sort of like terminal blocks in the sense that they're a commodity item. It's hard to do any sort of industrial um, production of something without having some relays involved. So I would say they're, they're nearly in every single industry that you could think of. What are some key characteristics of effective interface relays? I'll say some of the key characteristics on what like, most customers would look for are size. Um, DIN rail space in cabinets is typically a hot commodity. So if you could have a, a relay that takes up as minimal size or as minimal space on the DIN rail as possible, that'd be great. Um, easy to use, whether it's an easy way to bring wires into the relay or an easy way to put it on the DIN rail. I think a lot of customers are really after ease of use when they're looking for relays. And then finally, I would just say robustness, like the quality that they know that this relay is going to be able to switch the load that they needed to. They know it's not going to burn out way sooner than they expect it to. And um, yeah, I'd say finally just replaceability. Relays, especially electromechanical relays, are known that they don't last forever. No one expects a, uh, an electromechanical relay to last forever. So if you have a relay system where you can very easily replace a relay once it's died and put a new one in, I think that's a huge plus for customers. What's unique about Phoenix Contact's PLC interface relays? The first most notable thing is the lead frame, which is basically a metal frame within the base of the relay. And this metal frame helps dissipate heat within the relay. Um, a lot of other relays out on the, the market have PCBs inside of them. And I'm not, I'm not anti-PCB. I'm not a, a printed circuit board hater or anything, but they are prone to hot spots. Uh, a lot of times PCBs will get a lot of heat condensed in one single location. And as most people know, heat and electronics, not the best of friends. So heat is usually pretty damaging to electronics. So if we can do anything to dissipate that heat within the base of the relay. I think that's a huge advantage. Um, but the lead frame actually has more advantages than just the heat dissipation. It also comes down to our manufacturing process where we are able to stamp the lead frame into the base and then all of the components within the relay are actually pressed to fit into the lead frame. So we're not soldering any of those components in. So it helps streamline our manufacturing process and keep it consistent. Where if you have people soldering in each component one by one, there's a chance for a human error, whether it's too much soldering or too little soldering. It's just, there's gonna be a little bit of inconsistency there where pressing everything to fit keeps it super consistent. I mentioned some of the components inside of the relay or inside of the relay base that are pressed to fit. Some of those would be a, a polarity protection. This would protect the relay from being wired up backwards, basically just diodes that will stop you from, if you were to wire it up backwards, it's not gonna fry anything on the inside. So what's really cool about the PLC relay family is actually that they all have the exact same form factor. And what I mean by this is I have three relays here, but you couldn't tell because they all are the exact same shape. And this one 
is even 14 millimeters wide compared to the 6.2 millimeters. So the fact that they all have this consistent shape isn't just for looks. It actually has a very nice um, functionality to it. And that comes into play with our continuous blade bridges. Since these all have the same form factor, we can bridge these extremely easily without having to consider pitch, width, or spacing, which you typically need to consider when using a bridging system. I don't know how often you bridge anything, but a lot of times when you're bridging stuff, if you have a slim, a slim component and then a wider one, you have to get special bridges that account for that gap or whenever you're mi mix and matching, it becomes a nightmare to bridge. But with everything the same shape like this, it's really easy to just bridge down the line. It doesn't matter if you have a single pole and then a double pole back to a single pole. You can orient them however you want and it won't make bridging any easier or harder. Very cool. I think those are some of my favorites. There are some other features like an integrated LED, but I wouldn't say the integrated LED is extremely unique. That's something that you'll see um, in other relays as well. So if it's in other, other relays as well, what is its purpose? Um, the purpose of it, it, it's just an LED that, that'll turn on whenever the relay is in its energized state. It's just an, an easy way to know, okay, this relay is energized. Uh, I'll know what, um, what state it's in. It could also be useful for maintenance and testing purposes. If you're trying to figure out what's going wrong, it'll help you know if the relay is um, energized. But one last thing I will add that's with internal to the base of these relays is the, the integrated kickback suppression diode, which is just a diode inside the base of the relay that would protect upstream of the relay from any sort of inductive kickback caused by the relay itself. So it, it's not protecting the relay from inductive kickback, it's protecting upstream of the relay from the relay itself. And finally, we have solid state relays with a black pluggable relay and electromechanical relays with a white pluggable relay. So can you tell us a little bit more about their electrical performance? So within the PLC relay family, we have, we have tons of specialty relays that will do all sorts of uh, additional functions that we could talk about in a bit here. But if we're just talking about the standard electromechanical relay, we have input voltages in AC, DC, or UC, which is a universal current, meaning that it, it'll accept AC or DC on the input side of the relay. On the output side, most of the relays will switch up to six amps continuous, but we do have options that'll, that'll go all the way up to 10 amps continuous current. And I may have mentioned this in our uh, last question that I was answering, but these do come in double pole, double throw and single pole, double throw. So that is the difference between our 14 millimeter wide, which is the double pole and our 6.2 millimeter wide, which is our single pole. So you mentioned that the PLC interface series uh, also offers some special functionalities. Are there also any uh, options with environmental ratings? You know, since you said that these are used really across the uh, industrial industry, like there's a lot of harsh environments uh, applications. Yeah, th there is a lot of harsh environment applications. And we do actually offer relays that are equipped to function in those sort of environments. So we have um, we have EX relays, which are have class one div two, ATEX and IECX. So they are triple rated for safety applications and to be used in potentially explosive environments. Um, we also have rail, railway applications that are railway application relays that are designed for railway applications. So these are these have higher ratings for vibration resistance as well as temperature specs. So yes, we do have relays that are um, more focused on operating in uncomfortable environments. Do you want to touch on any of the other specialty uh, op functionalities? Sure, I'd be happy to. So we actually have tons of specialty relays in this slimline form factor. We have relays designed for high current applications. We have relays designed for high inrush current applications. So not even just high continuous current, but high inrush current from a capacitive load. We have relays designed for low current applications. So these are relays with gold-plated contacts 
that don't oxidize as easily in low low current um, applications. Usually the current kind of cleans off the oxidation layer of the contacts and in low current applications, there it's not high enough to clean off that uh, that oxidation layer, but gold is resistant to oxidation. So they're great for low current applications, but we also have relays designed to mitigate any sort of interference on the input side. So if you have a PLC that's maybe leaking current, we have relays that'll filter out any of that extra current and only, only get the, the signal that you actually want. We have high frequency switching relays. We have force guided relays that are great for safety type applications. We have relays with manual switches on them that allow you to manually actuate the relay without actually energizing the base. Um, DC motor control relay, timer relays, the list goes on and on. I, I think I touched on the majority of them, but I'm certain there's a few I, I didn't get to mention here. But yeah, we have a lot of specialty relays with a lot of different functionalities. So the whole goal here is to have a, uh, a perfect product for anyone that needs them. Because sure, there, there's a lot of applications that you could use a standard relay on and it would do the job just fine. But if we can design products to help people do that job better, then might as well, right? Are there any success stories you can share about Phoenix Contact PLC interface relays? There's definitely a ton of uh, success stories I could share. So I'd say the main reason that we get a lot of success, or maybe not the main reason, but a consistent theme that I've seen a lot is the, the space savings that we're able to provide with these relays. So Phoenix Contact was actually the first company to come to market with a slimline relay form factor of only 6.2 millimeters. So we were able to save customers a lot of space within their cabinet. And then we're in an, in an era where space saving is everything. Is there, people are trying to maximize efficiency and just condense and condense, space saving becomes more and more important. So one instance that comes to mind is there was a, an air filter company. They were producing air filters that would go into buildings and filter the air in a room or in a large space, what have you. And these units were pretty, they're not very large because they're just kind of mounted up on the top of, you know, maybe the corner of a room or maybe on the ceiling. They're pretty small things. So they have to fit all of their components in a pretty tight space. Uh, we were able to hook them up with some PLC relays that was able, they were small enough and slim enough on the DIN rail that they were able to fit everything else that they needed all within this enclosure that it will be mounted on a wall somewhere. So ultimately there's a potential for success anywhere that needs to save a, save a little bit of space on a DIN rail. Is there anything else you'd like our listeners to know about Phoenix Contact or its portfolio of interface relays? I would say the final thing that I, I don't think I really mentioned earlier, but it, it is a cool feature, is the fact that these relays can be ordered as individual components or fully assembled modules. So what I mean by that is you could order the base and then order the relay, or you could order the base plugged into the relay under one part number. And the reason why this is cool is it, it, it depends on who you're talking to. If you're talking to a purchasing person, you can explain to them that instead of needing two different part numbers on a bill of materials, you could shrink that down to just one part number on that bill of materials. If you're talking to somebody that might work on the floor and actually assemble these relays, you could tell them that instead of having to open up two separate boxes, pull the base out, pull the relay out, and then put the relay in the base and then mount it on the DIN rail, they could order it and it'll come out of just one box and the relay will already be in the base. So all you have to do is pull it out of the box, snap it on the DIN rail, and you're good to go. Beyond that, I'd say the final thing I would mention is just that our relays do come with screw connection and they offer the same push-in connection that you see on a lot of Phoenix Contact products. So if you're looking for a quick a quick way to wire up relays, the, uh, the push-in connection is a great, great offering. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today, Logan. And thank you to our listeners for joining us for this episode of the RS Expert Advice Podcast. 
For more information about Phoenix Contact, please visit www.phoenixcontact.com. For a complete collection of expert advice content, including more episodes of the RS Expert Advice Podcast, please visit us.rs-online.com slash expert.